Good morning, my friends, and welcome to this episode of Happiness After Codependency. I'm Marshall Bircher, and I'm your guide in coming back to knowing, loving, and being who you are, because that's how we transcend or heal codependency by, you know, so we can go on and live our life, be happy, do things that we like to do, have relationships and experiences that fulfill us. That is my goal for you, because that's what I experience in my world. Uh, post codependency. So there we go. Okay, I'm excited to be here with you guys for today's episode. Today we're going to be having another episode, uh, another episode in the series called "Exposing the Codependent Fantasy." Uh, this one's called "Being Limited Is a Threat When It's Tied Up in Your Worth." So that's what we're going to be exploring today. Before we do that, I'm going to get this shared out to the community real quick so y'all can also view it there. If you're looking for a place where you can find guidance, you can find support. You can find additional tool, tools and opportunities uh, for healing and growth. The community can help with that. The link is above on Facebook, below on f- uh, YouTube, in the description. If you're watching by YouTube, please subscribe and hit that bell button because I upload stuff weekly, sometimes, uh, usually two to three times a week. Um, also, thank you for subscribing and sharing this out with sharing my, my work out to people whom you feel would benefit from it. Additionally, <laughs> yeah, if, again, if you're looking for a place where you can have that support, that guidance, that shelter in your healing, check out the community. Again, that link is above in the description above on Facebook, below on YouTube. Check out the rules to the community first before joining. Make sure that that is a proper fit for you. So I'm going to get you shared out here real quick. Do, do, do. You know for a long time, I used to think, and this is going to be tied into today's topic, actually, that I had to be perfect in what I did with these, you know, the pictures and the promotions and the entrances and introductions and blah, blah, blah. When you're, that, that's kind of impressed upon us in, in business training and the coaching training that I've taken and stuff like that is this idea that we need to perform a certain way or we're not going to be seen or valued for who we are and i think that that's actually demonstrated itself to be patently false because i'm just me and you guys are you and many of you guys choose to work with me and that is an honor and a privilege and i'm excited to be able to contribute to your world that way and that ties into today with being limited so in codependency we we tend to seek value uh, through the fawn response. And the fawn response is going to manifest itself, manifest itself in behaviors that tend to uh, try to appeal to the threat. So this is where people-pleasing comes in. This is where morphing comes in. Morphing is the habit of shifting ourselves to meet them, to appear in a certain way that we believe would please them or appease them so that they will, one, stop their abusive behavior, and two, maybe even increase their love bombing a bit so that we can get that hit of euphoria. We're going to be doing some work with euphoria and fawning and how we disengage this merging response and get connected more with their innate value and our own safety and our innate self there. So those are the things we'll be exploring over the next little bit here especially as we gear up for uh, deeper work in this in the heal yourself strategy so <clears throat> for those students that are with me and if you want to become a student join the happiness after codependency system it's open for enrollment the link is above on facebook below on youtube uh, it's open enrollment till uh april 8th all right thingies so back to this limiting performance thing so to please someone, we must not have limits. If we have limits, they get upset. Let me know in the comments below if you've experienced someone being angry, upset, criticizing, name-calling, withdrawing love, affection, attention, time, or doing some sort of abusive or harmful behavior towards you because you said no or because you had a limit or because you didn't understand what they wanted or you know, whatever reason occurred. Limit is a natural, normal thing. But when we're ensconced or or drowning in a situation, in a dynamic where 
you are expected to provide a specific kind of supply to the other person so that they can feel a specific thing, um, limits become a threat. When difference as, is regarded as an insult, as an attack, as an offense to the other person, limits become a threat. When you have a different level of capacity in something than they want, limits become a threat. We learned by the way they reacted to our limits and to our boundaries, which is not a form of limit, it's just one that's chosen, um, we learned to fear limits. We learned that if we have a limit, we are going to be harmed in some way. We are going to lose love. We are going to lose safety. We're going to lose connection. We may even lose identity or purpose. So remember, codependency is an effort or a method or strategy to try to meet the three essential needs we all have, which is a need for safety emotionally, physically, and relationally, a need for connection with ourself with, and with others and with the world that's safe, and then a need for identity, which involves a sense of value, a sense of purpose, and a sense of inclusion. We don't get those things. We're going to go out and seek them. Codependency is a strategy our brains developed in order to get those needs met because we were not getting them met by the family unit, by the parents, by the culture we were in, that kind of thing. So limits become a threat because the other person's going to withdraw things that we need in order to have a sense of safety, connection, and identity in the world. So we try to get rid of our limits. This results in burning out our nervous system. It results in anxiety. It results in frequent experiences of overwhelm. It results in depression. It results in a chronic tension in the body. It results in a shame and guilt towards ourselves for not having a certain capacity or capability or talent. We learn that limits are bad because we're being compared to other people. They're, the person that we're bonded to, the, the parent or the peer or the, the significant other or whatever, is praising this other person with these particular attributes and then denigrating ourselves, ignoring ourselves, putting ourselves down. So we learned this. This is a, a narrative we gained because of the toxic experiences we've been through. It isn't that the limit itself is intrinsically wrong or bad. It isn't. It's a director. Limits are an arrow pointing us towards a better understanding of what works for our well-being and happiness and what does not. It's a filter there. It's like only so much this, only so much that. It also helps us understand our shape as a human being. And when we understand our shape, we can see where we fit, how we fit, and where we don't and why. And that can lead us further and further towards our own joy, our own well-being. Because when we embrace our limits, we start to understand what works and what does not and how those things work for us. This is where magic enters our world because now we are starting to get a real, innate, genuine sense of identity, connection, and safety with ourselves. When we have this in place, this kind of connection and, and embodiment of ourselves, the world becomes a lot simpler to manage, to navigate, and to understand because now we're not looking to try to fit in. We're not trying to contort ourselves so we get love. Instead, we start discerning resources in our world and seeing who fits with what works for us, who does not. And the deep, the deep work here in this specifically is how limits relate to our value our sense of worth and being and 
um, social worth or social value, our internal innate value, our sense of um, personal worth. Because when they are typically coupled together in the abuse dynamic, I won't love you unless you're this thing. That's really the message we get there. When we decouple them and we go, wow, this person won't love me because I don't do these things for them. I'm in a transactional dynamic here. This isn't love anyway. What they were giving me was approval. And I confused that with love because that's all I got growing up. I didn't get real love. Real love is this embrace and warmth of your presence and your beingness. It's an appreciation that you exist, a gratitude that you're there in their world. They don't need you to be something. They want you instead to be who you are and to understand it and to follow that. That's what love promotes is, hey, I want you to be happy. What does that mean for you? It doesn't mean, hey, you know, I love you, so you need to do this thing for me or I won't love you anymore. That's not love, my friends. That's approval. That's dangling the carrot. That's a love bomb. But it's not love. Remember, love bombs. Remember that term? Because what do bombs do, right? They explode. So if you're getting love bombed, something else is going to happen soon and it's going to be an explosion. It's not going to be great. Real love is soft, it's warm, it's consistent, and it favors the well-being of all involved. And it favors individuality. It wants to know, respect, and value the person as they are. So this is our work here. If we have trauma from being limited, from the way, well, I'll state that differently. If we have trauma from the response people have to us being, to, to you being limited or me being limited, if there's trauma there for you, it's going to be attached to your value. One of the first steps we need to do in this, I, I teach in the Four Essential Concepts and Practices for Healing Codependency Workshop. And links above on Facebook and below on YouTube on the description. Um, ooh, first thing we teach there is we've got to start soothing the tension in the nervous system so we can allow this to be fully acknowledged as something real. Because most of us are tied up. Our identity, our value, our purpose, our energy, even the reason, oops, sorry about that. Even the reason we are healing is tied up in this. We're healing so we can get the thing, so we can be lovable. I'm healing so I can be a lovable, safe person. You're already lovable. Safety in this regard would be determined by how you behave, that kind of thing. Our real work is actually to come to love ourselves. It's come to attenuate ourselves to our values. So that starts with soothing the tension in the body, bringing a little calmness into it, a little less tension. The second step is to, is to start restoring the legitimacy of trust or trust, trust in the legitimacy of our, innate, of our uh, reactions to things. Because when we don't trust the legitimacy of our reactions, we cannot get in contact with our lived experience. If we're not in contact with our lived experience, we cannot make contact with our innate value, our intrinsic worth. So that second step, we start restoring trust in the legitimacy of our reactions. And then we move to befriending and connecting with our lived experience and soothing and caring for our emotions. This starts to cultivate space and safety and connection that allows our intrinsic worth to arise within us. It's already there. It's that we need to attune to it. Our awareness needs to be trained to it. Kind of like dialing in a radio station. When we're doing this, we are decoupling from the need to perform and, uh, and earn love, prove love. We no longer need people-pleasing as a behavior to meet our needs. Instead, we start to use our intrinsic worth to operate from it, and we start to witness who in our world is treating us with love and then connect with them and build bonds with them. Instead, so the, the switch is, is, instead of chasing, we start choosing. Instead of 
hoping and seeking, we start discerning healthy people in our world. This teaches us how to value our limits because the other side of this, the long, just down the road a little bit, is that our limits point us towards our joy. They point us towards our peace, towards our contentment in our body. They help direct our energy and our time and our capacity in a way that brings a return to us that magnifies our well-being and our happiness. We become very limited because we become very defined. If you want to, one of the things I've, I noticed in my own journey, meeting other people, getting to know them, is the people I could understand, the people I could really know, were very defined. They knew their limits, they knew what they wanted, they knew what they didn't, they knew how it worked for them. I felt safer with those people than those who where this, this shifting thing going on that I couldn't really get a grasp on where their center was or who they were. And that's because they're trying to please me. Limits define, they create definition, they create shape, they create clarity. And from that clarity, we have a better chance at using our choice and our action, our personal power, in an effective way that produces well-being for us. Limits are our ally. Limits are our friend. And if we're dealing with someone who is attacking our limits, who's shaming them, who's putting them down, trying to get us to change them, we're not. We, we are dealing with someone who does not respect or care for us. They do not see you. They do not value who you are and your well-being. They value the cookie they can get from you, the benefit they can get. Healthy, loving, mature adults expect limitation because they have it too. They're clear with it. They're fine with it. Because they're more oriented towards understanding who you are and they want to be understood for who they are by you. This is where we build honest, clear, safe connection with others because we are defined unto ourselves. This is the, the work. In a lot of ways, all codependency work is about coming back to one's innate value and then from that attunement, coming to know, love, and be who you are. That's why my work is focused on that. Everything that I've built in the happiness after codependency system or in the healing codependency essentials trainings or in the four essentials mm -hmm. workshop are all directed towards this because that's the point of the work. That's the, that's the solution to codependency that way. So my friends, in our work here today, take a moment and open up to this self-trust exercise. What shifts if you trust just a little bit that your limits are good? Explore that. See what that starts to teach you. See what you discover there. And let, let me know. You can contact me on my website. You can share in the comments below. But let's see what you, what you experience there. So as a little announcement here, Again, enrollment for the Happiness After Codependency System is open till this Friday. So you can come join us. Link is above on Facebook, below on YouTube in the description, as well as enrollment for my next live course, which is a Healing Codependency Essentials Trainings. This course is designed to answer the question of how do I do it? What do I do instead of codependency, Marshall? Well, I'm going to show you what to do because in the first module, we decode your codependent impulses and connect them to a healthy alternative action. So when you feel like you need to please, you have a different set of actions you can put into place immediately. The second thing you're going to learn is how to contact reality by identifying and neutralizing your fantasies so that you can then make better choices and actions for you. Teach you how to do that. I'm going to teach you how to disengage the fawn response. This is your first step in healing the trauma bond and the merge effect of uh, trauma bonding and abusive 
relationships. Soothing the fawn response allows us to start connecting deeper with the lived experience of pain and neglect that we're dealing with so that we can start that healing process. And then the fourth thing you're going to master in this course is how to is how to enter and occupy your personhood by occupying the space that you the they right to take up space and then the right not to care. I'm going to teach you how to do those things. This particular course also gives you access to the four essential practices and concepts uh, workshops so you can master how to start soothing your nervous system, building self-trust, befriending and soothing your lived experience and emotions using the ALI process or practice, and then how to retrieve your innate value. So this gives you the foundation of essential practices and knowledge in which to start transcending your codependency and start really doing the work of becoming uh, who you are, knowing who you are, and loving who you are. So that's the magic here. So we start this Monday. Roman is open until Friday. Link is above on Facebook, below on YouTube. Let me know if you have questions. Come join us. It'd be exciting to do this together. Check the comments here on Facebook. So Callista shares, instantly got hit with a memory when my dad was dating my stepmother. She was making sandwiches for us. And I said I didn't want the heel of the bread, and she specifically made me a sandwich with the heel. Oh, yeah, that's harm. And then stated she would never have if I didn't say anything. Wow, that's that's pretty nasty. That's a vindictive power move. That's a coercive move. I put that in the abuse category right there. I had that experience with the step-parent, um, similar to that, not that specific one, but where my limits were were shut down frequently. You're not alone in that. It is far too common because unhealthy people like to exert power over powerless beings and they get a kick out of it. And it's really, in my mind, sadistic. So thank you guys for being here. Thank you for showing up, being who you are, and taking this big leap and journey, a leap of courage and this journey and coming to know, love, and be who you are. This is courageous work we do. So take time to praise and appreciate yourself. Go gently. And then I will see you guys in our next training. Have a great day, guys. Bye-bye.